drink tank. It doesn't matter. Any one of those claps is a good cue. Oh, not the time I got the clap. <laughs> it was a monster clap. A monster, a monster clap. clap. <laughs> well, I guess we started the episode. Oh, hey, everyone. No. Welcome to another episode of... Episode! <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Drink Tank. Actually, this is our new segment, A Thousand Pounds of Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about our lifting totals. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, based on the panel, you're probably assuming we're getting together to discuss the collective works of Brandon Sanderson. Yes. Or, wait. <laughs> but we're not. What? <laughs> Yet. That's it. That's the joke. I, that hey, was... That's terrible. How you, you thought that up. How long did it <laughs> I thought of it this morning. I don't even <laughs> like the new Mistborn books that even... much. They're not See? that good. He's but they're talking... not what he's written most recently. I, well, okay, maybe. I've, I've only ever read those. What do you want from me? I didn't like the little no novella yeah, in enough. between, too. You know? it's just yeah, fair enough. Oh very fan servicey. No, a lot of my on this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, you got to be careful going after Brandon Sanderson, though. Remember that, like. I'm not going after weird, Brandon Sanderson. Ooh, that weird Brandon journalist Sanderson. who, You're like. the only one him. going after him. I'm not going after I love no, him. No, no, no. Like that one journalist yeah. who did the, uh, like, Brandon Sanderson. He did, like, Sanderson. a hit piece on him. He's they like, did a hit piece. He's like, oh, this story should be about me, not Brandon Sanderson. It's like, oh, very As I walked into the Continental Breakfast, and I met Brandon Sanderson, I realized that he was wearing. A sports jacket and a t-shirt. What is up with that? I'm sitting here with right. my Dolce and Cabana shoes. <laughs> you know, and what's the name of this journalist? No one knows. <laughs> but I do I do like how the internet rallied behind Brandon Sanderson to be like, he's just a good man who writes good stories. Hey, you know what? I think it was a false flag operation. I think Brandon Sanderson was a journalist. I don't. I actually don't. <laughs> they wrote I, that I story. don't think so. I don't think so. Then what's the name of the journalist? Um, uh, so... Randon Branson. <laughs> <laughs> like Sarkeesian. That's a joke for another time. That's a good one. Anyways, uh, I'm going to have to edit all this out. So why are we really here? <laughs> well, we're here to talk about... Um, this is kind of a continuation of when we were talking about, like, what's the legacy of a show that's already done? One of the first videos you and I ever did was actually us talking about um, Psych, making movies. Mm -hmm. In the third Psych movie, and we talked about... Is it helping or hurting the legacy by having more psych productions? Ah. And I think the biggest failure, uh, one of the biggest failures of all time, um, is the fact that like the end of Psych hinted that they existed in the same universe as Monk. And now we've had three Psych movies, one Monk movie, no crossover. And nothing. And I am... Uh, like honestly, I'm a though little, I'm a little angry about it. Slight like, homage to Psych in the Monk movie. Fair. So but, I mean, it's not really anything. So, <laughs> so pineapple? Mm, well, if there was a pineapple, then two things. <laughs> no, I mean, when Natalie's trying to turn the car around. <laughs> That's so, the first spoiler. So, so <laughs> we um, without without diving too deep into spoilers, we'll just go through and like, did you like the Monk movie? How does it feel compared to the series? Now, for me, I'll start because I'm an egoist and also the host. Um, <laughs> He's got us there. Yeah. Uh, I am kind of disappointed in the Monk movie um, because I I think it does a better job of staying true to like how it ended, but I think Monk kind of ended poorly on its own terms. The name Adrian Monk used to mean something. I don't think there's enough um, narrative coherency uh, in the finale of Monk, so I think they had no place to go but up. And as much as I enjoyed a lot of the jokes in this, I still feel like if this had been one episode of the show, it would be a forgettable episode of the show. I'd have to agree. I'm basically coming down where you are. So the spoiler-free impression is I liked it. You know, it was enjoyable. All the actors were able to slide right back into their characters. Tony Shalhoub hasn't lost a step. You know, and all the monk-related so jokes... Len, you know, it's like, what are, what are you doing with all the luggage? He's like, oh, I'm organizing, you'll thank me later. He's like, I don't even know who you are. He's like, you'll thank me for that too. You know, it's like just classic, classic monk, you know, and they're like when he's got the, 
the hand sanitizer. He's like, like, no, that's mine. He's like, oh, well, can I use it? Sorry, I don't make the rules. But you do. Well, then no. <laughs> I mean, and so all the individual jokes land. However, like you were saying, if this was the whole story, you just plop this in the middle of like season four. Right. And it's, it's a just like a episode. and it's just like a normal episode. And frankly, you would even think it's an episode where they're not really trying that hard when you think of some of the crazy plots and stuff that they've had before. But right. again, very redolent of the series. It did it didn't try to bite off more than it could chew, but it, yeah, so like I have some quibbles, but on the whole, if you like Monk, you're gonna like this. Oh, this is not recording. Plumber, your thoughts, spoiler three thoughts. Oh, I loved it. Um, I was just so happy to see Monk again. Um, as, as a movie, if you haven't seen Monk, it's, you're, it's garbage. Um, if you watched Monk and you just really like the characters, you'll love it. If you watched Monk for the mysteries, you won't love it. Mm, that's really accurate. It is a lazy mystery. I mean, um, I mean, no, no spoilers, but I, I solved it before they even showed you died. Well, you know what? That was the thing. Is like it was so okay. So Monk pays a lot of homage to Columbo, Agatha Christie, things like that. Murder, and, she wrote. Mur exactly. One of the elements in shows like that was the dramatic irony of us, the audience, knowing exactly how the murder happened. And it's up to our stalwart detective to figure out how. Maybe there's like a little twist. We see this in the very second episode of Monk, Mr. Monk and the Psychic, where we see the guy clearly kill his wife. And then it's about how does Monk figure this out and connect it all. spoiler free anymore. Well, no, that's why I said, yeah. <laughs> so definitely not for the show. <laughs> so in this one, they were trying to have one foot in, one foot out, where they were trying to keep the murder a mystery, but it was so obvious and there weren't enough players. And I want to throw this out there right away. The, the wife of the billionaire, complete red herring. They kept showing her yeah. and I kept thinking like, well, she's got something to do with it. They're having an affair or she's the real mastermind behind everything and went absolutely nowhere. So I was amazed that she had as much screen time as she I did. I never thought that. Not once. Uh, they really? were they were really setting it up. I I, 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 I never like, I never bought that. I never thought that. I never. Saw uh, that. I, I honestly thought that it turns out. <clears throat> I thought it was going to turn out that um, the 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 fiance was having an affair with her secretly, because no. like the first scene with the two of them, she's all like, "Hey, yeah," and I'm like, "Ooh, what does that entail?" And then of course uh, you can't treat a legacy character like. Uh, <laughs> Trudy's daughter who was invented in the last episode. Oh, God. That legacy character who is worth all the admiration. You, you can't, I don't know. I, just, I, I don't know. And it's like, in like, there have been better episodes of Monk where they've had more clever storytelling devices. So I always think it's like, all right, mm -hmm. why are you doing this? And for me, the impetus for why would you tell a Monk story now is how did Monk deal with COVID? Yeah, I thought that was gonna be a bigger part of it, but it, it's explained away in like two minutes, you Dude, know? They do like three jokes about it, mm -hmm. but they're good jokes, I might add. Monk dealing with COVID is hilarious. <laughs> and then and then everybody's like, oh, I'll take a hand sanitizer wipe as well. And he's like, and he's like everybody's like you, Monk. And he's like, oh no. <laughs> They're gonna hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, those are the kind of jokes that land because they're character jokes. Oh, and all the Monk character jokes are the spot character on. character jokes it's land, so good. the story jokes, not so much. And the story beats too. It's like, why is this an hour and thirty-seven minutes? I don't you know? know. I really don't know. Um, mm. I will say we're going to jump into spoilers. We already did. Oh, why? Why not an hour and thirty-seven minutes? <laughs> That's fair. <clears throat> I, I will say it was one of the more enjoyable watches I've had recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not as good as some of the movies Plummer and I have watched together, which, um, <laughs> like when we watched Gran Turismo, that was awesome. Or, bad. or when we watched uh, what was that? What was that Christmas horror movie we watched? Uh, to all a good night or something like that. Like, oh, I don't remember God, the name. I don't know. Is it, he I just I, watched one called Piranaconda, so don't worry. I'm on that level too. <laughs> yeah, it's like that one's like a four. We, we had such a good time. We had such a good time. So, getting into the mystery behind it, um, as everyone who's seen the last episode of Monk knows, Trudy had a secret daughter that she, even she didn't know about. The I judge, hated that. I yeah, absolutely oh, hated that. Look, we can talk about this, troubles from the original series here later. But anyway, so... I don't want to. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. I don't if you, get, if you get into that, I'm gone. Yeah, so Trudy's daughter is now living with Monk. She's engaged to, like, this small-time independent journalist who I guess has... He has some 
following. I have no idea what his analog in real life is supposed to be, maybe like Matt Taibbi or something, you know? And then, of course, the main bad guy is a, an Elon Musk. Um, yes, the bad guy's uh, is Elon Musk. Uh, like Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Yeah, he's Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. It's that whole super billionaire thing. And Richard Brannon. Yeah, uh, Musk. No, he's Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah he's definitely so. Jeff Bezos. He's very clearly running Amazon. He's running Amazon. Delivery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then. You oh, know what? I got to say real quick. Yeah. James Purfoy deserves better. He's such a great actor. Yeah. I do appreciate that they made an Altered Carbon reference, though. James in... Purfoy does not deserve better. Have you seen all the shit he's been in? I he did see... Solomon Kane. That was sweet. Oh, he yeah. also did the <laughs> season one of Altered Carbon, which was awesome. Yeah, but, and then what else has he done? Uh, he did that stupid Kevin Bacon show, you're the right. The following. <laughs> it's called The Following, I remember. I am a cult leader serial killer. Yeah, I like... hope that Kevin Bacon doesn't follow me, even though I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, though, none of those are his fault. <laughs> and yeah, he's in them. So <laughs> it's not like, guilt by association. Don't say he deserves better. Got to get paid. So anyway, he's supposed <laughs> to be like a super billionaire, and his accomplice is like an ex thug who's one of his delivery drivers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, are what? They, is he gonna hire another security dry, like billionaire? Or what the hell are you talking about? Well, no, he but like he, he he could hire a wet work guy if on the deep web, easy for all this. You know, I mean, come on, like ex special you mean forces where the or FBI something. FBI hangs out. No, you go to the guy that you that you know is a criminal that you know <laughs> isn't an informant. That right. you know that knows but, but, how but, to make an altered <laughs> measuring it, and tape. And he sent him in there with it. Yeah, no, but, he clearly said that the delivery driver made the altered. Uh, Kubrick make another tape measure. It was identical. Either way, it's a fucking piece right, of plastic. All right, and you we're, we're going. The, the and we're going a bit further now. How did they know which model tape measure he had? He had to break in, but then he has to break in again to replace it, and that's when he knocks the, everything they over. They have his Amazon delivery orders. So you know what tape measure <laughs> They order. should have. See, I am glad you said actually, that because that, that was actually going to be. No, no, make more sense. No, that was actually that was a point I was going to bring up. If that was a plot point where they knew what he had and they were able to switch the order. Why are you nitpicking when up? that's like the not dumbest part of the investigation at all? I'm nitpicking all of it because Monk all would nitpick all, you, all, all this. You know, all you need that to know is that he, he changed the thing. I knew what he'd done before, like the mystery, before the murder even happened. Oh no, it was incredibly oh, obvious. Yeah. Uh, well, you knew it was right, the tape let's, measure. Let's, let's but that's not, that's not, you don't need suspension of disbelief for that, because I could fucking do that. We need suspension of disbelief though when the guy is like, oh, it's six feet too long. It's like, what a. Obvious. It's almost like, why is he there why and not there? recovering the yeah, tape yeah, measure? Yeah, like, that, the only thing that can link you to the guy. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's like the worst. Yeah. It, it'd be like, it'd be like, exactly. It's exactly just being like, well, guess what? I know this guy died because I did it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's so terrible. And like, the guy should not be there. It's like, this is one of those things where, first of all, can we also say the, the death of the, um, the the fiance is exactly the way the fiance dies in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Is it? Yes. Remember when he's proposing to? I can't remember. Someone changed his tape measure. And <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the bungee jump. Six the... feet longer, and then he splattered <laughs> on the ground. Uh, I'll go with yes. Oh, uh, wow. but like um, in Fresh Prince of Bel Air, his cousin, the uh, the attractive like weather or news I got lady. Nothing. No, her fiance is like, will you marry me? And then you hear nothing because he hits the ground. That's funny. And so oh. it is. And so I was like, I was watching, it's like, I've seen this done better. <laughs> but uh, I was really hoping Randy was secretly correct. About raising the bridge. <laughs> that was a classic Randy moment. It's so I, good. And I love too, where he's like, my deputies love it when I make make them guess. No, no they, they don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the what is this? Well, before this morning, it was four Star Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, four Death Stars. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is fun. amazing so, stuff. Actually, so even though... Like, I have my quibbles with this movie. I did really enjoy it. It immediately made me want to go back in and start watching Monk again from the beginning. That's fair. And it is actually pretty excellent how in character these people have been able to stay over 20 years. Yeah. You know, like like the f very first couple episodes of Monk. Uh, Disher's a bit more adversarial to Monk. Obviously, they become much more close as right. the series goes on. But still, though, they're I mean, so just, dialed that's in. That's good writing, though. Yeah, that's no, it, it's so it's dialed need, in, especially friction. where he's like, Captain, you're never going to guess what happened. And Stoppler's looking at him and he's like, are you, you're going to tell me, Randy? He's like, oh, right. You know, so like he's <laughs> always doing that, you know, so it is fun. I just love that, too. That he's like, my deputies love it when I make them guess. No, they don't. <laughs> then, like, the whole Randy Disher the project. The Randy Disher oh, No, this is literally impossible. What are the chances of that? 
at zero. There is impossible this could happen. I, I love that monk was like, I can't, I can't square this peg. I have, I have no idea what's happening. And then all of a sudden, Stottlemyre walks out. And you're like, all right, it makes total sense. Like it makes total sense. Yeah, I know. So again, again like we stuff. like we've already said, all of the character stuff was really dialed in and on point and very enjoyable. Right. Yeah. None of the characters feel out of time, out of place. Mm -hmm. It's the main story itself that's it's weak. It's weak. Mm -hmm. And like um, one of my biggest complaints was at the end where you know James uh, Purefoy is about to go up into space and then there's Monk like cleaning the window. <laughs> but A, that's hilarious. And and B, <laughs> I I, ho like I was hoping they would go full blown batshit crazy and send Monk, Monk into, into space. space. Yes, I was like, I was come hoping on. that they would just <laughs> right. that Monk would like be like, hey, I'm coming into this cabin. I want to be in here. And James Perfoy would go beep. <laughs> <laughs> You know what space is full of? <laughs> germs. <laughs> no, the I mean, radiation would be like, it's, all the germs. Yeah, and then monkey would be like, actually, yeah. yeah um, yeah. Um, it was like, <gasps> free. I just, like, I think this this movie's interesting because, uh, as I said, I really like James Purfoy, as, uh, Purfoy, whatever his name is, as an actor. I like him in, um, like, Altered Carbon. I love Tony Shalhoub. And mm -hmm. I was like, just let these two talk to each other for hours. Like that's what that's the movie. No. The movie should be the two of them in a room where he's explaining how he committed the crime. That would be so shitty. I loved it. I my one of my favorite scene probably in the entire movie is where Monk is the bartender. <laughs> and he's <laughs> just like he's, like he's like he can't cut the limes no. correctly. Just, and then they cut to the trash can and just full of umbrellas and stuff. And I was like, that, that is a perfect Monk moment. Like that's exactly what would happen if you asked Monk to make you a drink. He wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Like, it, so like the, like again, the, the great character stuff. It's not a job for me. It's a job for someone who's. Not me. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So, uh, the beginning of the movie, I think, has uh, quite possibly the best reintroduction to a character when they do like the book review. Oh, he's reading all about his oven. Yeah, that was yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. What are the odds that he and I would have the same, like, back and clear? I don't know, one in six? <laughs> like, it's just, like, there's just so much about it that is. That... I get to that in the book. Volume two. <laughs> Volume two. Yeah, no, there's a lot that's uh, truly excellent. It's one paragraph about the suspect and nine pages <laughs> about the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> All right, I think we got to talk about the elephant in the room, too. The biggest spoiler is that the whole movie, Monk is contemplating suicide and he's going to oh, go right. through Oh, right, yeah, it. I didn't like that. Yeah, that just kind of totally really felt out of place. No, that made a lot of sense to me. You think it made a lot of sense? Yeah. How so? Why, uh, why, would, why, would, why would Monk, a man who has been tortured his entire life and has spent the last 15 years, you know, with, with this daughter, and now he's he's finally, she's finally leaving him. You know, she's not really leaving him, but she's really leaving him. Okay. And so there goes his entire support network. Natalie's gone, Disher's gone, Stottlemyre's gone, and the woman that he now, I'm, I'm assuming, depends on because he can't go out and do his own shit. She's she's leaving to start her own life. Why Why would this man who is miserable... Since Trudy died, not want to die. I don't know. They you may... know what, Plumber? You, I think you you did hit on something uh, quite quite profoundly. Is to the character, what does he cling to? What does he have? I I don't agree with like the well, whole him what, being depressed. Then thing, what but, changes that makes him? Well, so what changes his mind at the end then? Because ghosts. all the stuff you said, <laughs> ghosts, ghosts, real, real, real ghosts, oh real God. ghosts, <laughs> canonical ghosts. <laughs> so the ghosts are real and not in his head. He and I had this conversation uh, oh, before man. this, and and Plum is like, so ghosts are real according to Monk, and I'm like. Oh God, I guess so. <laughs> well, I mean, so so you know, it was when I was watching it, the lady in the freezer at the end. I was like, so clearly she's a ghost. He hasn't met yet, but you know, he did look at the the case files, that's and true. his brain could have said she's dead in the freezer because that's how his brain works. Correct. Yeah. Well, and, no, remember it was called the fr the freezer was where the cold cases right. were. She's not literally in a freezer. Yeah. I knew that. Anyway. <laughs> but you do know that because that's yes. a conversation we yes, had. I, I do know that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> don't dumb it down for Dylan. <laughs> anyway. Someone has to. No, I like, but no, I, it, I, I just thought it was, a, I, I did think it was just a little too heavy and the, that was That was too heavy handed at the end. Uh, yeah. I'm fine with Trudy's ghost. Like, I think him being, 
You know, kind of haunted yeah, by his past. Trudy, makes sense. Actually, he's, the, he's seen Trudy's ghost the, multiple times in the yeah, show. From a personal point of view, the very first episode of Monk I watched, where I decided I was going to watch the show, was actually when Monk was chasing after the dead Kung Fu star, who was still somehow killing people even though he was dead, and he gets buried, buried. alive. And they can and hear he, him talking and, to well, Trudy. And he, he hallucinates Trudy and everything, and I was like, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like there's a lot of emotional death for which I thought was just a silly procedural show. And I ended up watching the whole show because of that one episode. You know, so yeah, so he sees Trudy. I'm fine with that. But it was just like all this other stuff that's clearly some form of psychosis or something. I'm like, this is getting a little weird. Well, then again, I mean, he'd been clearly, I think he'd been having psychosis since COVID. Yeah, like yeah. They, they clearly showed and, well, that he's and gone, then I think he's I, gone down. I, yeah, I think we need to see that COVID was really more of a step back for him because everyone who knows Monk would know. Oh yeah, COVID's really gonna mess him up. So yeah. they you told know, us but, and they like, didn't show it. I think someone appreciates that kind yeah. of narrative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll jump in on this one because it was so subtle, plumber. Uh, <laughs> but yes, the uh, the showing not uh, they showed us not uh, well. They told us. And showed us, I guess it's. Uh, God, I. I just uh, it was just. It was just like so. <laughs> quick. Well, you know, you caught me off guard. I have no response to. Yeah, your... but that's the thing. Like it, it uh, was just. It was just so but quick. It is, it is. It is important to me that they kept the fidelity to monks. Like monk during COVID, what would have been like that would have ended him. Like that would have been like the the worst. And it was. That's what he was still and on the downward spiral. And then they did that. And then mm. they show it. You know, it's like so. Going into the show, having been a fan of the series, it's like, oh god, what would Monk do during COVID? Mm-hmm. I wish they had done a little bit more of that because it's like it is fertile ground for him just being. And they they make a couple jokes where it's like, oh, now everybody's you, Mister Monk. Yeah. Everybody's watching. He's like, oh, they'll hate they're it. not him. He's sitting at home in a hazmat suit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to eat soup and stuff. Like that. Fucking wild, man. It's and I do like that he tested himself like every fifteen minutes. Yeah. It's all oh, yeah. you know. It's all it's good. Like, <laughs> but also, that's a, another part of the problem is during COVID, he very clearly decided he was going to end his own life. And that's why he was stacking all those pills. Yeah. Well, that and makes it, sense. Yeah. And it's just kind of. But People like, hoard pills when they're planning to end their lives. They do that. Yeah. But then it was just like, but like, why now? And then almost like, why not, not 20 a lot. years ago. Because <laughs> then he a was lot. going to the, to the last person he had left, the last anchor yes, to the I, world. I think Plummer was I, yes. I, I, I just. <laughs> <dumb>. <laughs> Well, I look, think Plumber, when I everyone think left him, she answer. didn't move in with him until COVID, though. So he was living alone for a while until living COVID. alone isn't ha- being alone. Like she is moving on with her life. It is more metaphorical. Mm, than I still think it's a little weak. I well, still to, think it's to, a little. To be weak. honest, I think it's a weak character in general because she was introduced in the last episode of the series. Last oh, fifteen no. minutes of the last yeah, episode of the series. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like we don't we have not as an audience spent any time. Yeah, with like her. it was. And kind of, we did during the movie. Well, we there was, did during the well, movie. Well, yeah, but it was kind of hard to get the emotional buy-in of her fiance dying. It was just like like right, it was it as ten minutes. Into it was it. as much emotional connection as you had to any other victim in a monk show. You know what I mean? It's like eh. You know, it's but, not like it's also, like Stottlemyre's wife died or something. You know, like I, someone we've known and grown with. The, the problem, the problem with the uh, the monk movie is the same problem with the monk TV show is that none of it is actually dependent on having watched the series or being invested in it. They mm. reinvent Trudy's death three times. They mm. invent a new character in the last episode to give Monk emotional stakes. And as I told Dylan as we were talking about this, it's like in the last episode of Monk, he's contemplating dying from being poisoned. So yeah. we get so we get Monk contemplating dying in the last episode and then we got Monk contemplating suicide. So both of our last two sit-downs with Monk are him contemplating death. But they both they both make sense. So uh, you know what? Well, uh, one of the do, points they, I, I think they make more sense. Well, uh, one because he's movie. literally poisoned, so yeah, he, yeah, that's yeah. why he's got to play him, death. Him, him, like thinking he's gonna die due to poison, I think makes more sense than. I mean, I like the movies, kind of like um, him being like, oh, I don't know. But well, I, the thing about the movie too is we have to remember there's the one scene where he's talking to um, the Jeff Bezos analog by the cliff, and he says, "I don't suppose I could convince you to jump," and he says, "Not tonight." So, like, he's already kind of moved past the idea that he's going to kill himself. Well, no, he says not tonight. That's not saying not tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just saying, though, we've already seen the progression he's away saying, from that. No, and he's then saying it immediately not tonight because back. he's still in a case. Right. Whereas mm. once the case ends, he did something like that. Same I, I don't know. I, th- I, oh think he made, I think he made more I progress. Kind of, I kind of agree with Plummer. I don't know. I think he made more progress. Well, and then ultimately, he doesn't kill himself because the ghosts aren't real. 
right? That is his head. Wrong. So all the, the, ghosts, ghosts, are the ghosts are not real. The, the ghosts, ghosts are knocks real. his pills off the table. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> knock his pills and stops his hand. That's Dylan, all. They, 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 they impact the real world. <laughs> They're real enough. I mean, yes, it grabs his wrist to stop him. That's it. But like that could just be him going like, eh, you know? I mean, I'm just saying. Fair or it could be 147 ghosts. Anyway, all I'm saying, unlike you guys, I don't think suicide's that funny. It's hilarious. Have you not seen Lethal Weapon? <laughs> hey, Derek, Derek, that's what you <laughs> took away from Lethal Weapon? Hey, Derek, Lethal Weapon? Play the song. <laughs> so this is a joke that you're not going to get because it happened with, with just Oh, I'm sure the audience is going to love it. <laughs> on his birthday. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was my birthday. And we're all sitting out on the deck. We're having a couple beers and whatnot. And uh, mom goes, Derek, play, play that song. Play that birthday song you like. And so I played I Kill Myself. Oh, jeez. And she just starts crying. Cue the music. <laughs> jeez. Yeah, it was so good. Terrible. Yeah, probably not making it in the final cut of this. But, I should uh, hope not. I'll well, I can't play the song. Yeah. Oh, that's I'll right. I blew my brains against the wall. I'll see you in All right, now we're going to get copyright stricken. <laughs> no, we're not. Because he actually did sing Uptown Girl um, one time by Billy, the Billy Joel song. Is that what it's called? Uptown? Yeah, Uptown Girl. Like a, I sound like a moron yeah. now. But like he's like, what if I start singing this song? And I was like, oh, you're allowed to cover it. And he goes, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> so, oh, that's good, because Plover and I were going to sing Delilah later. <laughs> why? Oh, why Delilah? Monk would have solved that one really fast. I'm going to grab another beer. You guys keep Oh, talking. get me a Dark Materials. Yeah, me too. So anyway, you know, I've been nitpicking a lot what? about um, Monk, but I really did enjoy the movie. I've already watched it twice. Uh, once just to watch it, and then once in preparation well, I th for I this think, show. And, I, think, and I, I really liked it. And it's just what kills me about it, though, is like I don't yeah. think you needed. And again, it's all nitpicky stuff. You just didn't need the villain to be this Jeff Bezos analog because, like, the the extent of his scheme could have been done by like a guy who like ran a small business. Even you know what I mean? It's like. His being a billionaire didn't have a big impact on it. The wife was a red herring. Him going to space ultimately didn't matter. And we've seen Monk actually literally deal with a guy in space with Mr. Monk and the astronaut. Well, the where guy the guy's, in space. Well, no, the guy's alibi was that he well, was in space. Must, he wasn't in space while Mr. Monk was dealing with him. Yeah, well, that's true. But still, though, I'm just saying, like, yeah, we've, we've had seen, a space case. We've but had a space case. We've had to deal with space billionaires. Because there's, like, there's, well, like, they don't even go to space, in though. Pool. Yeah, I know. Oh, this is true. But they don't even go to space. So, like, I just feel like there was some... <laughs> I just, I just, I know I'm going to super cut you guys yelling space case. Space, space case. Space case. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing is... Um, you know, it, it, it just, it already feels old because, you know, we, we already right. had like Glass Onion do like the whole Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos thing. You know, I mean, even in the Joe Pickett well, books I'm reading, Musk. there was an Elon Musk, uh, like Jeff Bezos guy. They're all interchangeable. You know what I mean? They, they no, just they're, mean, they're really not. They mean, super, they mean super powerful billionaire type. You know, but that's what I mean, though. Like, it's always like the richest guy in the world is but doing these things. it's not always. Things. It's just, okay, you listen. No, but I mean, cases. it's happened. So... Uh, middle-aged white men murders wife happens a hundred times. Well, of month. course it happens. But and that's so you're complaining about, oh, but they don't do anything. Did it three no, times. they don't do anything interesting with it. And there is another billionaire case, the billionaire mugger, where the guy like gets sh gets shot by. Um, oh, what's the name of that guy? Uh, anyway, but the, Alec the, Baldwin. The, oh no. <laughs> You know, but I'm saying like Monk did dealt milk, Monk has dealt with billionaires and things before, and the whole impetus behind. This Jeff Bezos analog killing the journalist is that the journalist is unraveling the murder he committed in the Bahamas. But it's like, dude, if this guy has witnesses saying they took payments, that would that news would break through, even if he is an independent I actually, journalist. I, I, I agree with you. Um, I think the um, like that like this is the only guy to talk to someone. Yeah, is bullshit. And then to kill him over it because yeah, then yeah. he makes the other points like people write terrible stories about me all the time. Yeah, and it's like. That's true. If this guy had no credibility, by all means, let him publish the story. Well, if he has credibility, it's it's uh, the the cat's already out of the bag. I, I do feel like this uh, this movie was probably written by like a completely different team, um, people who probably never saw the show. And then that every is not true. I don't know uh, if I go that second. far. I would say the the because we have good character moments. That's what the actors brought. Maybe no. I, I don't think the show paid that much attention. I mean, to did Andy did Andy Breckman write it? I mean, I don't direct think so. it? I don't know. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know how like uh. ear splittingly jarring they are in real life. Like, oh my god, that's Who true. Is? That's true.
No, I've, I've, <laughs> us. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was talking to the viewers at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, thank you, all thirty of you. So or maybe, or maybe the people in the future. Someone could be watching this in twenty twenty six. We would never know. Yeah, You'll we'll be long be dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I don't hope. think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, that's. I think that's ultimately what's disappointing is like the story is just so grafted on, even though all the character stuff is it so strong. It didn't even need a murder. Yeah, it almost <laughs> didn't, right? No, I actually I, think it, that's a really good point, Plummer. I think that's a, a, an exceptional well, he, point, is he did we would have watched he characters. A case. We would have watched characters talk to each other. We did not need... Um, no, we wouldn't need a case. I, I'm, I'm being hyped yeah. about it. No, but like, to be honest, like we, we would have dealt with a much more simple case. A lot more... I, I think we'd be a lot more favorable to a it, simple It does case. kind of feel like the billionaire was trying to go bigger and better, but it, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it did with the astronaut case and the other billionaire mugger. Yeah. So like, it, didn't, it didn't really go bigger and better. Right. But at the same time, it, it was... It's, it was just it was too simple. It was too simple. It was a perfectly serviceable like mid-season episode. It would have been a fun watch if I, it was a I, real episode. Dude, I said it earlier. Like, if this had movie, been an episode though, of the yeah. show, we would not be talking about it. And again, this is just it. me nitpicking. I, again, I enjoyed it. I think oh, people I should see it. this. I yeah, I mean, just Tony Shalhoub as Monk is so... <laughs> and like the fact they said the last case, like, please don't be the last case. Do more. You I, should pay Tony Shalhoub to just do cameos. Yeah, I, 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 you know, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Huh. <laughs> Maybe we could win an Emmy with a cameo. Well, mm. the tell you what, he would win more Emmys than Better Call Saul. Oof. But that's Zero a story for another Emmys. time. No, it's not a story for another time. I'm shoehorning it in. Ah, oh, damn it. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> 53 nominations. Zero, zero wins. Wait, 53? Wow, yes. that's a lot. Dude, like, just statistically, you think they would have won. Don't, don't, they won for like, um, they produced like shorts. And they, they didn't oh, win any of those. They won like three Emmys. You told me that yesterday and I and we looked it up. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. Oh, wow. Um, uh -oh. No, it's 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 disappointing because and yeah, no one takes award shows seriously anymore. The, 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 well, Not after Game of Thrones won for season eight. Oh, God. <laughs> God. That's a story for another time. <laughs> that is a story for another time. Oh but, my God! But I will say this um, because it's I, a I, winter out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Westeros out there. Zombies and dragons Boy everywhere. Walkers <laughs> everywhere. And dragons everywhere. But, uh, but, but no one seems to care. Not Cersei. Yeah. The story might end well, <laughs> but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I mean, honestly, this is this is. Not even for the cameras. This is literally how we hang out. <laughs> That's true. There would be no difference. Yeah, it's like mostly musical numbers. So anyway, uh, I want to, I guess then if uh, we're getting a bit far afield, so if we want to yeah. start wrapping it up, I guess our final thoughts. We've only been talking for like 30 minutes. Oh, well, okay. Then, well, then <laughs> my, my midway. That's 20 minutes too long before you're doing it. My midway thoughts. <laughs> An hour and a half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to watch movie for an hour and a half. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just say the story did support that run like. Like when he and I were talking about like Echo, yeah. it's like, oh, that was good. We talked for like 15 minutes. It was 40 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, but one of, so. The, anyone out there, you should watch Monk, the original series. It's really, really good. Try not to get... We, we mention it in our yeah. golden age of TV. Oh, yeah, as well you should. Actually, I love that episode, too. I did watch that. that I mean, the big problem is with Monk, the show, is it was on the, the cusp of... Yeah. But, like, the characters... It was one of the in, tweener shows. In the first shows. couple seasons, the characters forget in between episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the Monk with the child is one of the biggest yeah. forgetful moments yeah. that I can remember. You, you know what? Because that's so important in the episode. And it's so important to character development, but they never bring it back. And, and But there's lots of moments like that in Monk where he just kind of forgets. So, and but the characters have that one collective One of the things amnesia. they had to do in Monk, too, is they really had to make... Trudy's death very attenuated and keeps stretching it out and adding different oh, yeah. angles to it. <laughs> and they, they, they and just... I just want to do a quick breakdown just to establish how crazy it is. Monk is always right. under the impression for the first, uh, up until he, uh, up until, uh, I forget which season, but for the longest time, he's under the impression that the car bomb for Trudy was, was meant, meant for him. For him. However, yep. Monk is actually targeted to be killed specifically by different people in earlier seasons, like the Doctor in Mexico. Dale the Whale. Dale the Whale. And he never asked them, did you blow up Trudy? Even though they are trying to kill him, so he is actually being targeted to be killed, and he never grills any I'm of these people. I'm going to assume he's investigated them. And, well, uh, not this Doctor from Mexico, because he would have known about him. I, I would say he got completely taken off guard, Mr. Yeah, Monk the goes to Mexico. Mexico 
had such a convoluted plan, you think he would have done something <laughs> as simple as blow up his car? Yeah, well, 20 years you ago? You think he would have asked, like, Monk would never have dismissed it out of hand. He didn't even know Monk existed. You know, and Trudy then we there. find out from Monk's brother that he thought Trudy was at that parking garage because she went to get cold medicine for him, and that's why they didn't talk for seven years. Yeah, but they and don't so you think that. that's So you think that's really interesting. But then it turns out, all the way at the end, that Trudy's actually there to meet the judge, doesn't meet the judge, has a bomb that's planted that was made by someone else, right. planted by someone else, triggered by someone else, and they keep doing all of those things just so they can stretch out different little episodes, well, they, they only to end with the critical piece of evidence being the Christmas present. I know. Which... That was terrible. Blows my mind. Because you know terrible. what I'm... Because, like, I get why Monk would never open the present. I kind of get it. But at the same time, it's like... Once you find out the car bomb was meant for Trudy, which he learns way before the last episode, don't you think you're looking for more clues now? Right. Don't you think that could possibly be a clue? You know, like, he, he for a man who just doesn't miss anything, he had a lot of blind spots, Trudy. And I want to bring up one more thing, because I've mentioned this a billion times. So, the first time we hear about Monk learning about Trudy's death, we hear from uh, Ennio Colantone's character. Enrico Colantone. Yes, and yep. Mr. Monk and the Employee Absolutely. of the Month. Now, to be fair, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all the caveats out of the way. But so he is talking to Natalie at the time, and he's like, I was with him when he got the call. He was actually laughing. He hasn't laughed Last since. Sense. Now, maybe he was lying, trying to get sympathy with her, but the, we do know they were actually partners. Flash forward all these seasons later, last episode of Monk, he's actually at a crime scene when he finds out Trudy blows up. And Yoko Antoli's not there, he's not laughing. What? Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. However, what is in the very, very, very first episode of Mr. Monk and the Candidate? What does he say? One of his catchphrases. It's the same case. It's the same case. It's the same case. The same He's case. investigating a murder that happens on the same day his wife dies, and he never looks to link it. And when you link it, it's very obvious the midwife who birthed the child. Are you kidding me? He right. never connected those dots. And the reason he never connected those dots, because those dots were not there until the last episode. Well, I just had to get that rant off my chest. I've been sitting on it for years. It's a great <laughs> rant, but also, um, I think you're forgetting getting another important part of this rant is they change what she looked at. Oh God, I mean, that's just such a small detail. Like Monk staring at the wall, uh, Stanley Tucci staring at that wall. Yeah, like this, this wall is, is supposed thing. to be important. It's the last thing she and ever then, saw. And then when they last do episode, it, car's facing the wrong way. Yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? I know. Uh, like, so what, what, what like, like, uh, it's like, seriously, just go back and watch the episode. And she survives the car bomb. People oh, forget I know. this too. The whole thing she is lived for like 20 minutes it's after a 10 night. pounds of sea floor blew up next to her and her eyes survived and they end up in a Abby, oh my goodness, no. And, but that's the problem with the show, and I want to give it some grace, because like you guys said, it was on the cusp of that golden age. It straddled, this guy just dissociated. It straddled the line, let him. It straddled, because everything I'm saying is true, it's fine. And so it straddled the line from the golden age to everything, and once they are able to serialize it a bit more, they were able to start locking in things, and they had to ignore other things. I mean, we always forget that Monk always said, Trudy fell in love with me because I was a detective. Well, then they change it to they met in school. You know, they, so. Uh, well, that's one of the best episodes, too, is where he goes to the Oh, that episode's and, amazing. I love that. The, my only problem with that is that, so Monk says he learned Trudy's phone number because someone wrote it on his back on a piece of paper. It's like, okay, Monk's not letting anyone write stuff on his back. That is fair. You know, and the fact that that happens, like, twice, I mean, like, come on, no one's, he's not doing that. I'm sorry. He would be like, here's the thing. Or, like, he would just be, like, avoiding the paper the whole time. Come on. Mr. Cool or whatever his name was. <laughs> Captain yeah. Cool. Captain Cool. <laughs> Why do they call you that? Why do you think? Why do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, though, and I say this as someone, I love Monk. I've watched it like four times, if you could tell from my encyclopedic knowledge of it. But, I mean, I love it. Fair. And I love the movie. Mm, and it was great, you know? It's just like, I don't know. I just like, I, I expect a little better, a little more effort, a little more attention to the timeline because it's stuff Monk would notice. You know what I mean? If Monk was watching Monk, he would point this stuff out. Well, so um, I'm glad you mentioned like uh, the attention to detail because um, we are, we just hit the two year anniversary of Plummer and I reviewing The Expanse, mm -hmm. and all we talk about is attention to detail. Yeah, like, like they set things up, you better pay them off. Mm. And I, I like I really think we've we've lost a little bit of that kind of narrative structure where it's important that a character says something does something. We don't yeah. we don't have that anymore. Well, and see, like you guys said too, with the whole golden age thing, I have grace for Monk. It started in two thousand two. 
It was right before all these serializi- ser- serialization, like right. Breaking Bad's, Mad Men's and stuff became really important. So I can forgive a few retcons here and there, but you do have to acknowledge and know them. And it's just, and at the same time, it can be a bit disappointing. And it's just, it, but it's just one of those things. You know, it's like the six figured, the six fingered man. It's like, what is this? You know, it's like, I, I, like I built the bomb. I didn't plant the bomb. I didn't blow the bomb up. And it's like, oh my God, they're really trying to stretch this out. Dude, they completely forgot about Dale the Whale. <laughs> I mean, they... no, he points because he sends Monk to New York to meet the guy who built the bomb. Yeah, but like, you know? what does that mean for the end run of the series? Oh yeah, I know. It means it's nothing. Like, like yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just weird. But that is the episode. I think that is when Monk does learn that Trudy was the target. I think Dale tells him he's like, "Well, you were never the target, and it was always." And that's Trudy. what, like, season three. I don't. Yeah, it was one of the last ones, Sharona. So yeah, it would be like season three. I think well, it's Sharona. Sharona is like in season one and two. You know, also too, I would have liked to have seen uh, Shiro- the actress who plays her, uh, Biddy Shram. I would have liked to have seen her in the movie, but I understand why she's not. But you know, it was pretty great. You got Hector Elizondo out of retirement for the movie. You got um, that was uh, what, a great is, scene is with Hector Elizondo, of... where he's like, you know what, Monk? I've been. Oh, reti- it's so good. I've been retired, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I, oh my god, I love. First of all, when uh, the actor who played Dr. Kroger, Stanley K- uh, K- Kramer, died, you know, those were big shoes to fill. And Hector Elizondo did it with a blum. I mean, he was really, really good. And seeing him back here and him them talk, and then it's just such a classic monk and therapy moment. He's like, I heard you talking about your book. I'm patient A, aren't I? At least I'm not patient D. That guy's got problems. He just looks at him. And, and he's like, you just Aww. know Monk is all the patients. He's yeah. all the patients. That's a classic joke. I love it. it. Oh, well, it's a it's a smart joke <laughs> because you know, like you get he get Monk, no, do you immediately you know that Monk space. is all yes. the all of them yeah. Yeah, exactly? Yeah, and then Monk gets to to do all the references, and it's just so fun to yeah. So no, it was great, and then um, Natalie, uh, what's the name of the actress that plays Natalie? Her name escapes me right now. Portman. But she came. She came out of Natalie retirement. Natalie Portman. No, but she came out of retirement for it as well. You know, so it was nice seeing that effort made by all the principal players coming back. You know, it was really, really special. I, I, I will say, I think it's a little better than Psych than the Psych movies. I liked the Psych movies, mm. but they, the Psych movies, um, they really had to lean on the fact that like Sean and Gus are just awesome yeah <laughs> you know uh this monk movie at least did the uh monk being all right here's the joke here's the setup here's the payoff mm-hmm. i wish it had a better story um the psych movies had bad stories too it, it, and i just like it just go back and repurpose one of the earlier stories like you don't have to do that much to make this like top tier yeah it was kind of like they were trying to raise the stakes and then realized they didn't have to raise the stakes but then they didn't adjust the story accordingly you know like i would have just tried to have kept it a little more simple but you know like i said though it's still enjoyable i think everyone should watch it i agree plumber any final thoughts no okay (laughs) (laughs) that's the end